Oppenheimer's Jason Helstein joins us now to talk about why he sees so much room to the upside. Jason, great to have you with us. Um, why, you. why do you think Google's been underperforming over the past couple of months? I understand you can pick any sort of different time frame, but within the past couple of months, what do you think is its, its problems have been? What can Sundar Pichai do? Really, it's, it's really a lack of confidence and leadership. Probably the, the best example would be, this is like uh, you know asking somebody to get in a Waymo that will only go 20 miles an hour. No one's going to want to do that, right? So right now, um, the company is putting too many guardrails on their AI because they're too concerned about you know the criticisms, and they just have to kind of lean in and, and stop being so defensive. So you're saying they actually have the technology, but they're sort of throttling it to make sure that there are controls on it? Because they're doing that, and they're still spitting out incorrect or dubious results. So what kind of guardrails are, that, are they? I mean, none of us know, you know how well the technology really works under the hood, right? But what we do know is this is a company who's, who knows how to index the entire internet better than anyone else. If you look at the data, um, you know, I look, you know, if you look at the, the usage of Google's from November to January is, is up 3% according to similar web. Bing is up seven, but as a percent of users, um, Google is still like 98%. If you look at percent of searches, um, they're at 91%. And going back a year and a half, they were something at like 92, right? So the point is that this company knows how to index and find information better than any other company in the world. And the question is just why won't they allow that information to come through? And um, again, it just seems like there's you know just too many training wheels that have been put on uh, on their generative AI product, and it's actually hurting the the output um, to the point where just investors have lost confidence right now. But Jason, it's, uh, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. Does, does is search behavior about to change? I guess is my question to you. In a way that Google's former dominance, and you talked about those numbers every time people count them out, uh, and I know you're, you're going Lou Duva on him, fighting their corner as well, uh, footnote Sandy Kennel. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts here? I mean, because if search is about to change as we know it, um, it really opens up the playing field. Again, I think what people were really excited about with ChatGPT was just how it, it had almost like a human-like interaction, right? And it captivated consumers. I could basically have a conversation with a, con with a computer way more efficient than an Alexa or a Siri, okay? You know, but when people actually started getting into fact-checking, there were a lot of issues, right? And so what people have been using generative AI for is the automation of tasks, right? Like put something in, summarize it, right? Which again, the, the, the thought is Gemini actually does that pretty well, but the criticism is really when you're using it more like a search, you're asking it a question, right? Like who is better for the world this person or that person, right? Or create an image of X, Y, Z, and it won't do it, or the image just kind of doesn't make sense. And so, you know, it ultimately, you know, Google is giving you, you know, typically we use it in business, right? Like four or five results, and you use your intelligence to go, this is the one I want to look at, right? You know, do we get to the point where it just gives me one? Um, and again, it just seems like we're still kind of very far away from that, but Google should let Gen AI do what Gen AI does, right? Which, which is you're asking it to automate things and et cetera. So again, like I think we all need to see kind of what this looks like without the training wheels. And that's really a, like a management decision and then being willing to basically accept the criticism, right? Like it will be an imperfect product, but like let it function. 